Hello, and welcome to this third embryology video discussing the formation of the head and neck, specifically the face. Facial formation occurs between the fifth and tenth weeks. Let's look at the embryo from a frontal view. The face forms from a fusion of five swellings. One frontonasal prominence in the midline, two maxillary processes, one each side, and two mandibular processes, one each side. Failure of fusion results in various facial abnormalities. The five processes arise around the stomadium, which is the opening of the gut tube at the cranial end. The frontonasal prominence arises from neural crest mesenchyme between the forebrain and ectoderm. The maxillary and mandibular processes both derive from the first pharyngeal arch, which, remember, is supplied by the trigeminal nerve. This explains why facial sensory innervation is derived from the trigeminal nerve. Let's move on to the fifth week. On the frontonasal prominence, ring-like bilateral thickenings develop. These are called the nasal placodes. The edge of the placode enlarges and the middle becomes pitted to form the nasal pits. The lateral edge of each placode is called the lateral nasal prominence. The medial edge of each placode is called the medial nasal prominence. Over the next two weeks, the maxillary processes grow medially growing inferiorly to the lateral nasal prominences until the maxillary processes fuse with the medial nasal prominence. This growth continues, compressing the medial nasal prominences towards the midline until they touch and fuse. The fused medial nasal prominences are called the intermaxillary segment. As this occurs, the medial nasal prominences have also been elongating inferiorly, forming the middle of the nose and the philtrum of the lip. In this manner, the medial nasal prominences and the maxillary processes form the cheeks or maxilla and the upper lip. The lateral nasal prominences do not form the lip just the outer bit of the nose and nostrils. The deep groove between the maxillary process and the superior lateral nasal prominence deepens and is renamed to the nasolacrimal groove. This forms a tube or canalizes to form the nasolacrimal duct. This connects the nasal passage to the medial corner of the eye. Remember that the eyes form on the lateral aspect of the head and then move forward and medially as the facial features become compressed. Let's review what forms what. The frontonasal prominence forms the forehead, bridge of the nose and medial and lateral nasal prominences. The two maxillary processes form the cheeks and the lateral portion of the upper lip. The medial nasal prominence forms the philtrum of the upper lip and the tip of the nose. The lateral nasal prominence forms the ale of the nose. The mandibular process forms the lower lip and the jaw. Now we have discussed general facial formation, we are going to talk about a clinically important process, the development of the palate at the roof of the mouth. To orientate ourselves, let's look at a coronal section of the face. Here we can see the oronasal cavity. The palate forms from the primary palate and the secondary palate. The primary palate is comprised of the intermaxillary segment, which is what was formed by the fusion of the medial nasal prominences. The secondary palate develops as bilateral outgrowths called the palatal shelves. 
These grow inferiorly from the primary palate until the end of the ninth week when they rapidly lift up or elevate. At this point, they fuse along the midline to form the complete secondary palate. This is the hard palate, or the roof of the mouth. The palatal shelves elevate very rapidly over minutes or hours, as a matrix of hyaluronic acid accumulates within them. So to recap, the primary palate forms the top and lateral walls of the nasal cavity, and the secondary palate forms the roof of the mouth, separating the oral cavity from the nasal cavity. The nasal septum grows inferiorly from the primary palate to fuse with the secondary palate, dividing the space of the nasal cavity in two. Now let's talk about some abnormalities. We just discussed the fusion of the palatal shelves to form the secondary palate, or the roof of the mouth. If this does not occur correctly, a cleft palate will result. Reasons for cleft palate include insufficient matrix accumulation, delayed shelf elevation, and incomplete fusion. Certain drugs given to or taken by the mother during pregnancy will increase the risk of cleft palate. Other extremely rare facial clefts may also occur, but these demonstrate the embryology nicely. The first is the unilateral cleft lip. This is due to the failure of the maxillary process on one side to fuse with the median nasal prominence. This can also occur bilaterally. Another facial cleft is the oblique facial cleft. This is where the maxillary process has failed to merge with the lateral nasal prominence, leaving an exposed nasolacrimal groove. A third facial cleft is the median cleft of the lower lip and jaw. This is where the mandibular processes have failed to fuse in the midline. Facial clefts must be rapidly fixed via surgery as they impair the ability of a child to suckle and so feed. Subscribe to Sultan Brain Hub for more videos to help explain the mysteries of the brain.